It was tough to hear, man. Uh, you know, eight to 10 weeks, Mitchell Robinson being out uh, with an ankle injury. Clearly, there, there's some structural issue there because he requires surgery. I'm not sure. You know, Hartenstein is a, is a good backup. He's been playing well since like the second half of last year. He certainly found a home here and, and has a lot of chemistry there. You have Sims now moving up. But, you know, Mitch's impact on this team it's it's going to be felt across so many areas from the rebounding, defensive rebounding, offensive rebounding, the pick and roll coverages. I mean, the defense is already in a tough spot, especially at the point of attack where where they are weak. You have Brunson and DiVincenzo there now, Grimes to the bench. This Mitchell Robinson thing is going to be is, is going to hurt us, Al. I mean, they went twelve and eleven and eleven last year without him. Now he's out. They got Toronto tonight and have to go five out west before coming back to see Milwaukee two more times. And then, oh, by the way, Happy New Year. Here's Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert, the number one team in the West, come to to uh, to the Garden on New Year's, man. And the tough spot. You said 12 and 11. So he put, so he missed, what was it, uh, 23 games last season. We're talking about 14. Yep. Well, let's see. We're talking about 14 now. <laughs> we're talking about probably another 50. We're talking about close to 30 games that he's going to be missing until February where he will be reevaluated. It's not guaranteed to be, yeah. be, be back. So they could potentially be even longer, right? It sucks, man. Mitchell Robinson, who was having like a defensive player type season, I like yeah. when the actual award would have been, I think, a long shot, but uh, just because how Rudy has just bounced back this season, but he could have definitely been on one of those teams for how he was playing defense, like one of the defensive teams, probably the second team. And to lose him, it sucks just because of the rim protection, his ability in pick and roll coverage, the offensive rebounding is going to be drastically different. Now, Granted, Isaiah Hartenstein as a backup big as solid as an offensive rebounder, but Mitch is just number it's one, man. Mitch, it's an man. elite. It's like he yeah. he he covers up a lot of the Knicks miscues on offense where it's some inefficient offense, especially when they get into isolation. You get some shots by like either RJ Randall, Brunson that aren't going in. He's there to clean it all up. And to lose a guy like that, it's gonna be brutal for the Knicks. I mean, Hartenstein will be a good backup. I think he'll be fine. You just pointed, they went 12 and 11 with Hartenstein filling that role. I know it was also Jericho Sims filling in some of those games as starter as well. But my issue is that Hartenstein as a starter will be fine, but it's like we won't even use the full aspect of what Hartenstein is, which is a good passing big. Like, are we going to run some high pick and roll for him? Or like not even necessarily high pick and roll, but like we'll be at the high post just doing handoffs, bounce passes, finding guys cutting. Like that's something that we saw with him and Grimes in Boston. And we know he can do with other players. But I feel like in that starting rotation where you're going to have Brunson dominating the ball, Randall dominating the ball, and then you got RJ there too. It's just tough for to use his full capability where he's better suited for that bench unit. That's the only thing. I, Mitchell Robinson is the most irreplaceable Nick for me. That doesn't mean he's the best player. Jalen Brunson's our best player, but irreplaceable. And that's yeah. with how good Hartenstein is as a backup big. Like he's still that impactful on every game. His mere presence. There's only a couple of guys. It's Gobert, Wembenyama, and Mitchell Robinson that can make dudes just look at the rim from four feet away and reconsider shooting it. That's the type of coverage that he has. That's his ability above the rim. That's his wingspan and athleticism, which is simply on a different level. The Knicks cannot come back from a Mitchell Robinson long-term injury. They can they can try, and they will, and they'll, they'll bust their ass. I know that they haven't had a single game that they haven't brought the energy this year. So you, you can be proud of them and just be realistic that without Mitchell Robinson, they are never, ever winning a championship, let alone being a contender. We can talk about DeRozan all we want. But if it comes down to like guys that the Knicks can't lose and I'm ranking them, Mitchell Robinson is at the top of that list. Number one, Jalen Brunson at a distant number two, just because of the system that the Knicks run and how much they rely on him. They can find scoring at some point. They have Randall. They have Barrett. That's not to demean what Jalen Brunson is worth, but they don't have anyone that can influence the air up there. None, none whatsoever. And now, you know, as, as far as, you know, replacements, insurance options, do they do they bring your boy Todd Gibson back out? Do they bring Todd uh -huh. back for a third tour to a second tour, whatever he did? Just call do Joe they, Kim, uh, CP, just, while you're at it. Call Joe Kim, say, hey, you know, we paid you enough. Can you come give us a couple minutes here? I've seen oh, Charles Oakley. Re uh, I've seen Charles Oakley recently. If he wasn't banned from the garden, I could say he was in shape. <laughs> right. I give him some run, right. too. Listen, my Kevin Linux theory is still being floated out there. I'm seeing a lot of fans get on board with it, man. 
you, <laughs> hey, you want a passing big man? You want a guy who can space the floor, shoot some threes for you? He's RJ's right hand man. Chemistry not an issue. Plays tough. Plays rugged. Um, we've seen CP. Yeah, we have seen too much. You're my age, okay? <laughs> There's a younger, there's a faction of Knicks fans. Being a Knicks fan is very political because it depends on your age. Yeah. And if you were born, <laughs> if you're younger, if you're like out of college and you were born in the 2000s, then you maybe were around for the Stefan Marbury, yeah. Steve Francis, the one year of trading for Tracy McGrady so that you think you can go and get LeBron. Or maybe you saw Othella Harrington and Clarence Weatherspoon running pick and rolls together, yeah. but you weren't alive for the Jerome James MSG commercial. You weren't alive for the 1994 <laughs> game seven with John Starks. Like we've seen too much. So when you tell me these things like Kelly Olenek might be a, might be a suitable, you know, can hold down the fort. I, if it doesn't result in winning a championship, I can't do this. I know, you. man, I, I can't know. do this. I, I it's either championship or bust that good seasons. Congratulations. You know what? We made the second round last year. This is why Knicks fans. I, a lot of them don't like me because I'm, I'm always sound like I'm pessimistic. And yeah. it's again, just, I've seen too much and yeah. I've been yeah. to the brink. And when you know, the beginning of Lord of the Rings, where he doesn't drop the ring in the lava and he just takes it back and it changes. All John Starks has to do is make one shot. My life is completely different. Of history. I believe in that. But so, and people don't share those same experiences. So I'm sitting here with a different perspective. And I'm telling you right now, Kelly Olynyk does nothing to get that ring into the Mount Doom fire. This is Sheesh. true. This is true. I'm just talking about insurance, right? You got Mitch out. You might lose Hartenstein. He's playing well. I'm just talking about insurance and to give the offense a, a, a nicer look, a different look, right? Everybody's looking for Julius to, to play with us, uh, a sports, a floor spacing big. This could be a cheaper option. Maybe this unlocks Julius and turns him into the MVP that Knicks fans want him to be. I'm just, I'm just thinking on the chessboard. That's it. Little incremental moves could mean a lot. Uh, uh, are you are you Kelly Olynyk's agent? I just need to know this. What do you do outside of this? Listen, I, I was I was pulled for Olynyk before they got iHeart. They got iHeart, and 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 here we go. No, let miss. me tell you something. I, I can only imagine the, yeah. the, the pre if Kelly Olynyk was a United States citizen, <laughs> he would be on that presidential ticket with you, right next to Alec Burks. Burks would be president. Olynyk would be Burke, vice president. Twenty four. CP's all oh, all star mean. bench unit in the in the works right here. Just pay, oh, just pay attention, people. Pay attention. Oh, Olenek and Burks, twenty-four, man. So look, I, I think, um, I don't know. I, I just see, I see playing status with this team right now with this Mitch injury and a tough December. You know, two more home games, three more home games left. I think like twelve road games. It's gonna be a gut check, gut check period for the squad. Let, let's see how, uh, let, let's see how they bounce back, man. Because I, I don't see the the big trade on the horizon until the summertime. Now they got to tread water till uh, till till Mitch comes back. I understand your pain, Rob. I I understand your pain, it's, but as the conductor at Knicks Fan TV, I have to preach optimism for the people. Man. I know, I know. It's it's good business for you, but I you can't kill what's already dead, right? What's dead may never die. He's so, broken. God, now, he's broken. <laughs> no, I, I mean I'm just I'm resigned. I just don't want to die and not have the New York Knicks win me like one title. So that's all I care about, and anything that doesn't help me get there is just yeah. irrelevant and whether it's kelly olenek or isaiah hardenstein like we're just in a different tier compared to these other teams in the eastern conference we all know it too but it's good business for you to to spread the word of god in a we way gotta like, spread the gospel i, I don't oh go god. to church to listen to a negative sermon <laughs> That's right. right i i I'm, it's just good business so i understand it but Man, I, I can't get there with you I, right now. I just can't. Rob, I can only imagine you doing like your burrito test, just dropping this thing, just thinking about the Knicks. Like, oh man, this is how, <laughs> this is how the I season goes. So many just burritos. Just like this. Boom. <laughs> Why, do you think I eat so Why do you think I eat so many burritos? Because they make me happy. And oh. it's clearly my basketball team doesn't. And I have to sit here three times a week and dedicate three hours of every day to watching them either come back from a 20 point lead or blow a 20 point lead. Oh, yeah. And, make it dramatic late and knowing that it's all ultimately going to end in a second round exit. What are we doing? Why do I continue to do this 36 years later? It's, it's in your blood, man. It's in your DNA. No, yeah. No shit. It, it's, in your DNA. <laughs> it's what made you who you are, Rob. Why you're yeah, so formidable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boys. CP the franchise, Alex Charles, Rob Perez, AKA worldwide, Bob in the building, the NBA report, hit the like button, hit the share button and subscribe to the channel. <laughs>